my name is Abby Moore. I am the, as Laura said, I am the Education Outreach um, Chair for the North Carolina Association <coughs> of Hazardous Materials Responders. It's a big, long word. I'm a proud member of the Asheville, Asheville City Fire Department, and also I'm part of a technical advisory group for the North Carolina Emergency Man Management Regional Response Teams. All of that means that I have been looking at products like this for my whole entire career. When Philip Mann first asked me to come and speak, I was really excited. I thought I was coming here to talk about relationships because we have such an outstanding relationship with Kapler, with the Hazmat Association. We believe in your product. We believe in the education that you do. We believe in the communication between industry and the fire departments. Then Philip said, no, I want you to come and talk about the importance of a firefighter going home. And when I received that email, it took me a moment I sat back, I thought, my heart sank, I got a lump in my throat and a knot in my stomach, and I really wondered if I could really come and talk to you about this because recently we have had the loss of two of our firefighters. One night of death was due at a fire scene, the other one was a young man who just lost his battle with cancer. And I'll tell you the story about Will. Will became a firefighter when he was 16 years old. He said it was his calling. He loved the fire service. Will was first diagnosed with kidney cancer, and then the cancer came back, and it came back as a rare and an aggressive form of cancer. The doctor came and told him that he had months, not years, to enjoy his small family. Will died at the age of 34 on his birthday. He left behind a young wife to care for four small children. And you have to ask yourself why. Why is cancer coming back at such an alarming rate for the members of the fire service? And I'm just going to read to you a little bit of, of a study. So the National, Association, National Fire Protection Association has recently done a study on cancer in the fire service showing that firefighters face a 9% increase in cancer diagnosis and a 14% increase in cancer-related deaths compared to the general U.S. population. We do what we do, we love what we do, and we know, that, know what we're facing. So this is an alarming rate. And the study went on to go look at you know, why this possibility is coming about. You know, is the building materials, is the, the more chemicals that we face in our day-to-day -day life. You know, but, um, you know, the main thing was, you know, we have to learn to do a little bit more. I actually have on one of the t-shirts from one of the fundraisers for Will. And the saying was, one team, one fight. So we're all in this together. We all have to be in this together to go and look at the alarming rate of cancer in the fire service and what we can do better. The other thing that Philip asked me to do was for have y'all to look at what we do through our eyes. When we go put on the suit, that we trust the product, we go in, and the last thing we do before we zip up, we get on air and we give the thumbs up. And the thumbs up to let everyone know that we're, we're secure in the suit, we're ready to go. The other thumbs up is to us. We're telling ourselves that we know what we're doing, we have been trained, we can go in there and do the job. But the other thing that's also always in the back of our mind is that we want to go do our job, do the job as best to our ability, come out, go to the truck, go to the firehouse, then go home. And that's always in our heads, in our hearts, to return home. When I was the North Carolina State Regional Response Team Program Coordinator, I had this saying about the program. It's a great thing to see this truck come with all the tools, resources, and talents aboard. But the better thing is when we see her go with all souls on board, safe and sound, job well done, and heading to the house. The one other thing I think about when I think about the fire service is trust. Trust that the public has in us to do the job that we do. Trust with the men and women on the line, with the command staff and people like me who purchase all the equipment. And the trust that we have with the industry the service industry who makes the products that we use. Some of the things that we go and do is very, very scary. We know what, what this product does and when we don't have that trust, at one point in time when I was, when I was there, I said, 
take the suits off the truck, we'll call Kapler, we'll get some suits, and as soon as we can, we'll bring it in. Because there was, a, there was something wrong with a zipper, and I just said, heck no. Because those are, that's my family. And I just could not go and, and with a conscience say, they're telling me it's okay, but I don't believe it's okay. And anytime that we've ever had an issue or a product, we have given y'all a call, a suit's on the way, my suit's back here to be tested, and it comes back. Anytime when we need more education, we, we call, we call Dennis, we call Philip, we call Miller, and education is on the way. You know, we are constantly doing because chemicals are constantly changing, and the bad guys are constantly we had an example of some fentanyl, you know, coming through law enforcement. And we go on a constant basis to pack to back up law enforcement. Because a little bit of that is an inhalation hazard and will shut your lungs down. That's it. And we can't have our brothers and sisters going into situations where, you know, they don't have as much knowledge as we do. Because we go through a lot of training, we go through operation awareness and technician, we go through chemistry class, we're constantly learning, we have to constantly keep up of our hours. We send our folks all over this country to go and learn because it's ever changing. But no, when I spoke about trust, it is that we you knew for a moment if I thought we didn't have the trust. We have the trust, we have the communication, and that's just so what is so vitally important. So whenever anyone comes and talks about firefighters and they say, you know, that we are the heroes. When we go out to do the job that we do in the safe lives, but it takes a community. It takes a community to do what we do. It takes fire, EMS, law enforcement, emergency management, and industry. And all of us working together in order to keep the public safe. So please understand that what you do, you save lives. You save ours. And we thank you so much for what you do, because without you, we could not do our jobs. It would not be safe. So in the closing, I think about that I actually was able to come here and talk about relationships. Our relationship, our trust. So once again, thank you so much for what you do and everything that you do. And you help us to become safe and sound and go home into our families. So thank you so very much. Thank you.